All right, we're talking Auto Club today for the Cup Series. Um, sorry for the delay. Has some computer issues. Sure, I'll rant about those at the end of the video. But let's talk about DFS stuff in general. When we look at this race, uh, kind of glad that yeah, I kind of didn't make any preview videos because my initial opinion, my views on Monday and Tuesday, everything I was going to say at that point was going to be, look, to be honest with you, just going to take everything from last year, throw it out the window. In terms of the Auto Club race, race last year, yes, we can take things away. Like, clearly, you know, Redick was fast. He'll probably end up being fast again. We understand who's going to have skill and speed and who's able to run this track very well. It's going to lead to people who are from the dirt track background. It's going to lead to people who have experience, and the pricing reflects that in terms of Larson being the most expensive. You know, we have tri Tyler Redick at $9,100, you know. Uh, this was outside of before, like the situation where we might not even have uh, practice and qualifying. I, I was honestly just going to, I was going to primarily tell you and explain what I was going to do. And that was going to be looking at practice data. Okay. And assuming that that's going to have a good uh, point of reference of where we want to go and look at. Now, the fact that there's a good chance that we will not have uh, qualifying this weekend due to rain and everything like that. So, uh, which was very funny that like, I mean, I wasn't on Twitter at all yesterday. I, I was yet again, dicking around with my other computer, trying to save it and get everything going away. And I come back and everybody, every tout out there, everybody is like, I think this is the starting grid. I think this will be this. This is if, if it's correctly, this is how it's going to line up. Well, one NASCAR does give it to us at some point. Uh, trust me as somebody who goes through like, did they ever update the Daytona 500 finishing stuff? If you pulled data from that post race, they still had uh, the loop data being wrong. You know, uh, I know Racing Reference was messing up with their finishing for the five. Like, look, NASCAR doesn't get their data right all the time. I normally, and that's why I usually complain about is this finalized? Hopefully, this lineup doesn't change because they do change it. That's just how it is. Uh, in terms of trying to project a, a starting grid before qualifying, I will just let them come out with it you know at least we have the the starting grid now of what it'll be it'll just be the qualifying order you know uh so we know that um if we don't get or if we get a rain out you know clearly you know you have reddick chase elliott william byron uh in the back of the field uh you know austin Dillon, and so on and so forth a lot of chalky guys in the back uh you know stenhouse bell uh logano alex bowman up front uh, kind of where I'm at this year, and I've explained that I'm taking a stance of, like, I don't really kind of care about chalk or not chalk, or if it's a bad slate or non-slate. I think that stuff has been a detriment to my uh, approach on certain weekends. Sometimes I feel like this is a bad race. Sometimes I feel like this line, this this grid doesn't appeal to me, and, and so on and so forth. I'm not necessarily worrying about that. We're all in the same boat. We're all going to be building with the exact same uh, type of lineup and type of situation so let's just move on if we get a rain out and we have just a bunch of place differential plays in the back so be it we're all playing together the only thing that i believe that this hurts is the fact that we might end up getting uh, a bit of an early slash in the DraftKings sizes for the contest uh for both xfinity and truck especially if both these run on on sunday uh i will get into picks in a second i'm just trying to get through all the motions of the ocean you know um if we do get a rain out, Cup Series race will be first. Xfinity race will be second. There will be no rubber on the track for the Cup Series. So keep that in mind. We'll probably end up seeing quite a few yellows in the Cup Series race. Uh, just due to guys getting the wall, due to tire failures, due to so on and so forth. I, I expect to see quite a lot of yellows in the uh, Cup Series race if it's ran uh, on Sunday being uh, on a virgin racetrack. If we have the Xfinity Series after that uh good man thumbs up all around like that's the real car you know uh that's how it should be like the real car last time around on this track yet again good job nascar uh you guys we had three behemoths we had michigan auto club and texas world speedway texas world speedway was by far the best of the big three okay we've killed that one off because it was built in college station and just nobody was around at the time in that area a very difficult area to get to now we have michigan and california speedway clearly california speedway i'm not talking about the asphalt but the california speedway is the better of the two remaining two mile racetracks okay michigan is terrible the design is terrible 
it wasn't that great before the repave, and the repave ha hasn't done anything. I understand that we are on an old track at this point for Auto Club, but the 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 design of the track, the way it flows, it, it is a much more enjoyable racetrack. It's a shame that we're going to lose that one. Uh, anyway, let's start moving on to talking about uh, the Cup Series, guys. Like I said, I am going to uh, very quickly... Uh, and I don't, I don't have yet again, this mild computer, uh, I don't have it set up to read off of this screen just cause I never used to use the screen, um, when I was on this one, when we look at the starting grid, let me try and bring it over here, uh, just so you guys can kind of see it. You're going to see the OBS stuff here, but, uh, let me move this real fast. All right. Sorry about this. So this will be the starting grid if we get a rain out. Okay. When we look at this based on pricing, yes, we're going to have some mispricings. Yes, we're going to have, like, as I said, we're going to have some chalk back here if that's the case. And that's why I'm kind of leaning more into this because I think it will be a rainout situation. If, yet again, if we do get practice and qualifying, I'm just going to go off the practice data. Okay, that's how it's going to be. So when we're looking at this race here based on if we get rained out, which, as I said, I think we will. Yes, Tyler Reddick, Jones, Elliott, Byron, we're probably going to need three of those four drivers in the lineup. We could very easily get away with playing three of those guys and just finding the one lap leader. Uh, there's a lot of potential in this race to see Chris or Bell run away with it. I know that we're, or not run away with it, but have a, have a real potential of getting those laps. I know a lot of people are freaking out on Twitter. It's like, oh, Chris Bell has DNF'd uh, his, his, for his only two cups series he starts at Auto Club. I don't care, dude. Like that, that's like useless, useless points. Every race is a new endeavor in in my opinion and, and certainly when we look at somebody who is just a bad track history as bell has at this racetrack to where uh he is finished uh where is he at bell has finished as i said 36 and 38 like i'm not that's not gonna scare me off why why would that why would that bother me at all uh alex bowman has speed here knows what he's doing logano gonna have speed clearly we're probably not gonna play aj we're probably not gonna play suarez chastain you know, we get to Blaney, who has had some phenomenal runs here, blew a tire and didn't or failed to win the 2020 race here. So there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of good potential plays here that we can still find of guys that aren't up front. Clearly, we're not playing where we're not playing LaJoy, Truex, Hamlin, Larson. Like, look, yes, the, the pool is going to be fairly small. The, you know, attitude of, of building lines, if we do get this rained out, I know some people are going to have some sour attitudes, but I implore you to just look at this and, and just take every slate day by day. I, I, I think you'll just, you'll find more enjoyable in that versus complaining that DraftKings missed some pricing or that, you know, it's not going to be fun. Like we'll, we'll figure it out <clears throat> in terms of what the optimal lineup is going to be. Uh, if it is, if it is played from this starting grid, I believe it's going to be duplicated. Not that big of a concern. If if you want to try and solo win, feel free to start playing some low-owned plays. But for me, the situations like this where very similar to uh, Daytona to where, it, you know, that optimal lineup, yes, while that wasn't duplicated, that lineup wasn't exactly crazy. I'm not saying stack from the back. I'm saying in terms of percentages for each of those drivers that we talked about being in the optimal lineup, it wasn't crazy at all. As I said, when we see Reddick, Jones, Elliott, Byron, like three of these gentlemen here being optimal would not surprise me at all if not all four, depending on what their prices is. Because, look, Reddick is 91. Byron is nine is 89. You know, Chase Elliott, he's 10-5, probably be the first one out if all of these guys end up scoring well. Eric Jones, 77, very easy to put in Reddick, Jones, and Byron in your lineup. Same thing with Chase Briscoe. Like, Briscoe isn't that expensive. Chase Briscoe is $7,500. So we're not breaking the bank. We're not, uh, you know getting crazy with how, you know, the initial start of the lineup is going to be. The only thing for me is that when I view this, I just see like, okay, cool. Well, everybody's kind of going to be working with probably a player pool of around 14 drivers realistically, which I think you should be doing each and every week anyway. But when, you know, the public and sharp players are all kind of agreeing that, look, the player pool is Reddick, Jones, Elliot, Byron, Briscoe, possibly Haley, possibly Dylan, possibly Priest. You could argue McDowell, probably Ty Gibbs, Kyle Busch, uh, depend on what you're doing with lines, possibly Gregson, Wallace, possibly these guys here. Like, okay, here, I know I'm probably saying possibly a lot. Let's put a yes, no very quick to just get a number of what people are working with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have, you know, roughly around 18 guys that we can put a yes in right now in terms of what they're going to project at. That'll probably bump it down to 13 or 14 guys actually viewing to be viable. Like, you know, that's fine. We're, we're all just kind of build lines together. And, uh, like, you know, look, it's Auto Club. If we get a rain out, eight, look, for me, just how, kind of where I'm at here, I love when practice and qualifying is rained out because that means I have to do less work during the, the week. I don't have to sit here. Or during the weekend, I don't have to sit here uh, importing practice data and stuff. Um, it's just going to be one of those weeks to where, you know, everybody's probably going to have a, a very similar uh, type of player pool. That's just how it is. If you want to be different, probably make one pivot, to be honest with you. Just eat the chalk. In my opinion, eat the chalk. Make a pivot with your final guy, if not two people. Specifically, probably for what your lap leader is. Like this race, for me, screams, if you want to play a really chalky line, just throw in Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Throw in somebody like Alex Moman. You know, I, I think those are, are possible ways to get different. Same thing with Christopher Bell. If people are going to be worried about Christopher Bell, like get different with a lap leader. Just eat the place differential chalk with your lines and move on from that. That's just kind of how I look at it. So now that we've kind of assessed the starting grid, and stuff. Let's kind of go back and, and just talk about these drivers in general and what I expect them to do or where I expect them to be at. And we're going to be going down based on uh, salary here, touching on quite a few guys. Larson's going to be a, a huge contender for this win. Uh, when we look at the, when we look at how these guys are uh, in general, how this field is probably going to go, I'm looking, as I said, when I started, the like dirt track guys, the people who have shown uh, immense talent at highway racetracks. Okay, and I hate it when that's just kind of thrown out there like, oh my god, if they're good at Atlanta, they're going to be good at Darlington and things like that. But clearly, like when I say that, I'm not meaning what are they doing at Darlington and Auto Club. I'm meaning do these guys, are they able to run the wall and not wreck themselves and not tear up the car? Okay, like last year, Reddick is running away with this race with very little practice unknown of what this car is going to do but hey he has talent he understands what he has to do to be there and if he isn't wrecked by William Byron he most likely continues to run away with the race and get the victory so going through these drivers who is going to show us talent to get through the field to make sure their car isn't isn't being destroyed Larson checks that box Elliot checks that box because he's starting in the back. He will move up and probably finish top 10. When we look at Elliot's finishes here, it's 26, 4th, 11th, 16th, 10th, and 6th. You know, so hey, very easily project the guy for 9th, and we're going to see him bump up the projections. Okay, Kyle Bush starting mid pack, going to run extremely well here because he has shown the ability to do that. Okay, Ryan Blaney, I understand, I even mentioned that he nearly won this race in 2020. Okay, however, are we seeing Ryan Blaney jump out as somebody who is going to be able to run well at high wear racetracks? Can he run the wall? Is he able to not destroy the car? Going through this analysis, I would say no. I'm yes, I'm proud. I'm splitting hairs here, but I'm telling you what I'm looking at in this race based on the fact that we probably won't get practice. Yet again, if we get practice, defer to that. Uh, not going to play Chastain. Logano, we'll see. I like him as an early lap leader. Can he get? Can I realistically see him getting around Stenhouse and Bell? Yes. Can I see him realistically holding on and not being passed by the good cars on the back once they catch up to him? No. But as an early lap leader, Logano makes a lot of sense. Bell makes a lot of sense. Okay. Truex, probably not going to go to Truex here. You know, starting, you know, around, what was that, 14th, 15th, not close, not close enough to the front to automatically, you know, work his way into laps, let him fast laps early in the race. Not far enough back to get there on place differential. So we kind of have to remove Truex, okay? Reddick, yes. Byron, yes. Bubba Wallace, does, can he even race? Uh, can Is Bubba Wallace a good driver? <laughs> Just not going to play Bubba Wallace here. You know, this is a track. Highway race tracks is where Bubba struggles. We, we've seen that. That's not a surprise. Okay, Harvick, I don't see enough juice. I don't think the, the squeeze is worth the juice for Harvick. Austin Dillon, place differential. Can he get up there? This is Aust This is one of Austin Dillon's most consistent racetracks. Okay? Like, a lot of people don't view Austin Dillon as a good driver, and I understand. I get it. I will, I will continue to argue as a joke, and we kind of get more and more serious. The guy 
is looking at a Hall of Fame worthy career. Okay. Truck Series Championship, Xfinity Series Championship, Daytona 500, Coke 600. Like, there's champions, in, there's champions in the Hall of Fame that don't have some of those. Like, to be honest, if Austin Dillon can end his career, you know, right around 14 wins, there's some arguments to be made depending on what races he gets. Anyway, place differential, is he able to get there on place differential for this race? That is an easy yes. Uh, where are we at? That's an easy yes for uh, Austin Dillon. What the heck? I need to move this. Sorry, hold on. Mm. This computer is so slow, man. I hate I, I hate that I'm back on this computer. It's so slow. Um, yeah, Austin Dillon going to be... There's 36 cars. Don't do math. 27. He'll be starting around 27. I like that for Austin Dillon. That's not bad at all. Uh, let's continue onward. Where are we at? Kozlowski just starting too too close to the front, in my opinion. Cindric just not going to do it. You know, Jones going to easily get there and place differential. Oh, yeah, going back to Dono. Like, when we look at how consistent he is at this racetrack, this is where, you know, I'm not leaning into everything related to how they've done at a, at a track, but when you see a clear... Uh, a continuation of how a driver performs well, specifically with Dylan and RCR. Like we understand, this equipment isn't the isn't the greatest, and his talent isn't the greatest. But when you see consistent results near a tenth place finish at this track through a multitude of years, Austin Dillon is showing up as a good driver. Eleventh, sixteenth, twenty fourth, eleventh, tenth, tenth, twenty fourth, and second in his career races here. Hey, when you look at that compared to other racetracks, we can see that on average, this is a, one of his more consistent racetracks. So what would I project Austin Dillon to finish? Probably 12th, somewhere around there. Going to look good at $8,100. Um, where was I at? I think it was like, you know, Jones clearly going to look fine. Briscoe going to look fine. Suarez is just not going to get there. And I don't mean to repeat myself here. But, you know, in a situation where there's so much place differential in the back, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of reiterating like, hey, this is why these drivers have such a high percentage of possibly an optimal. It would be very difficult for Jones, Reddick, Elliott, Byron, uh, Briscoe, Austin Dillon, Priest, McDowell, even Ty Gibbs and Kyle Busch to all fail. Okay, we are in the back half of the field, and mathematically, we're probably going to see three, if not four of these guys that I just mentioned there be optimal. It'll all depend on who else is the main lap leader, what else happens in this race, who survives some wrecks, who survives some restarts there. But we're kind of all dealing with the same pool here. Um, it'll just come down to whatever your projections end up being when we get closer to uh, the weekend. Suarez probably starting too close for me, probably won't get there. Stenhouse Jr., as I said, I think he is worthy of of a look for a low owned lap leader $7,100 starting first yes his results are scary but the fact that we do have some history of him not racing like a complete baboon with a fifth place finish in 2016 a fourth in 2020 we do have not, not a fourth uh my bad a fifth 2016 a tenth in 2022 but we do have a 14th and 18th a 15th you know so he's been there he's able to survive this track so a stenhouse knows what he's doing you know, so I, I would like, I'll probably not do, you know, a full 20 lines this week just because the pool is so small, but I'll, I'll certainly do around six or seven and I'll eat the chalk in a majority of those and try and get different, you know? So I, th I think Stenhouse is a phenomenal different play. If you're doing like seven lines, one line with Stenhouse, that's not bad at all. Uh, Briscoe probably not going to do it. I like Priest's, Priest's price at six, seven hundred dollars should be easy. It should be easy for him to pay that off. Eric Amarola probably starting too high up for me. AJ starting too high up. Gregson Gibbs will all depend on what our lineup is looking like. Same thing with Haley, but that's why I would prefer Michael McDowell. I think he can very easily get there with place differential. Uh, let me look at one thing over here real fast. Give me, give me a moment. Sorry about that. I had to get up. I don't remember what I was talking about. I'm pretty sure I was talking about like the value plays at this point. Like the fact that we have... Um, Noah Gregson at 6'2", Ty Gibbs at 6'1", Haley at 5'9", Michael McDowell at $5,700. In my opinion, this kind of goes back to where I think we'll have a similar type of uh, like lineup construction for a majority of lines and stuff. And if you want to watch more about lineup construction, I do, um, I do both post, like 
weekend reviews this year. I'm going to really work work on that, uh, which we started at Daytona. And then I will also uh, have like Patreon only videos in terms of me like kind of going through line of construction and looking at what lineups are being made by like the MME tool that we have or just what I think people are going to work at. I want to have that be like behind the paywall and then I'm also going to have videos if you were watching my channel last week uh, that go live when the slate locks of me actually building my lineup so I'm trying to show everything that I do in case I don't do this again next year or I stop making content next year or whatever so you guys can possibly like either use that to get better or like learn from my mistakes whatever the case may be um, but yeah so the fact that we have Justin Haley and Michael McDowell starting in the uh, back 11 uh, spots or potentially the back 11 spots in this race leans to me thinking that Haley or McDowell uh, one of those two will be optimal uh, if not both of them depending on how many people or how many points we need to just jam into the line uh, specifically with a lot of the 8 and 7k range drivers and so uh, yeah that's kind of why I think like the player pool is very small because the value plays if it gets rained out that everybody should use and go to and you can even include Ty Dillon because he's starting last. So we have Ty Dillon, McDowell, and Haley. That's your value plays. And then you just go up and you, you get to like Jones and you get to people like, uh, you know, Byron and Reddick and so on and so forth. Like, yes, you know, I understand that the fun might be taken out of, of building lines, but you know what? Sometimes you kind of need that. Let's, let's kind of just chill, just build lines, relax, get through this week and get into March. And speaking of March, March, March. It's right around the corner. If you want to support me, support Pierce, support the work that we do, support live shows, support just the time and effort that we put into this type of work, consider joining the Patreon, Brandon Cruz DFS on Patreon. The links are in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on Patreon, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you guys want to do, however you want to contact me, and I will answer your questions. Um, I think that's kind of where the DFS video is going to end. Let me just rant about the fucking PC for a second. Uh, <coughs> so... Uh, for me, I got a, uh, a Corsair Vengeance uh, PC just because I liked the deal that I I was able to find in December. Um, a 3080 Ti, an i9-12900K processor. I mean, a real beast of a computer. Stupid fast, awesome. I haven't had any issues with it. And I've bought pre-builds before, and I have I can build my own PC. I really just don't want to deal with that stuff. I'd rather, and specifically, that's why I went with Corsair, because I know I've heard that their customer service has been phenomenal very easy to work with I was hoping I didn't have to do that but um so I'm just I'm, I'm gaming the other day and my PC crashes randomly and I'm playing Counter-Strike you know and I've been you know I've been playing Armor 3 Cyberpunk even iRacing you know way more uh graphically intensive games and CPU intensive games haven't had any issues with it I was on a noob and it's just playing CSGO and and the computer cl crashes when I turn it back on uh, I have just a ton of issues with, I just have a ton of graphical issues. Um, there's artifacts all over the screen, uh, just weird graphical anomalies uh, just everywhere, like right on, right on, right on boot uh, before you even sign in or anything. It was on the screen, I would black screen at times, uh, just tons of issues. And so I was like, okay, cool. Um, you know, clearly, you know, something may have rolled back. Miss the driver on uh, the NVIDIA side will get that restarted. It doesn't do anything, you know. And so I'm like, okay, let me get let me get through all the software stuff first, or or at least the things that aren't gonna take forever. So I go through drivers, look at different things. I go in, I end up taking the computer, or I end up taking the case, I end up taking the computer out of my little cubby over there. I take the refs card out, you know, put it back in, and plug it, uh, unplug everything, plug it back in run against the rented issue so i'm like okay cool you know maybe it you know maybe it's the uh you know the display port whatever i'm using so i'm swapping through display ports i'm swapping through different cables I'm trying hdmi I'm even going to vga i mean i have two monitors here so i'm using both of them independently of each other in case one was messing up something that wasn't working at that point i'm like okay cool uh let me go ahead and just start doing factory resets and stuff, you know, and this is over the course of, you know, like several hours of like coming back and forth, seeing if this will work, if this isn't going to work and so on and so forth. Um, oh, and then I use the integrated graphics on there as well. I still had issues with it. So I wasn't, I wasn't even using the graphics card. I was just checking the integrated graphics and I was still having issues. So at that point I'm like, okay, well, I've at least identified now 
I originally thought it was a GPU. It is not the GPU. I got way bigger issues here. Let me just go ahead and reset everything. So I go back, reset everything, factory reset, remove all my own files, which is why I wasn't able to record or anything, because I took everything off that computer. Um, still ran into issues with it. Um, anyway, long story short, got to send that off either probably tomorrow or Friday or whatever, whenever I get the shipping stuff from Corsair. But I got to I gotta say, Corsair, customer service, fantastic human beings, awesome people. Uh, Best Buy customer service, fantastic, awesome people. Not a care, uh, or I don't have a negative thing to say. Uh, I'm sure the people are probably pretty ugly to them at times. Look, I mean, we've all worked retail at times, but uh, seriously, guys, don't be a dick. Don't be a Karen. Don't don't ruin somebody's day. If you're a good customer, you're going to get good customer service. If you are kind, polite, and explain to them, like, look, man, look, I'm just here. Let's just, you know, figure it out. I'll work with you, whatever the case is. This isn't a rush. I understand. Like, they're, people are going to help you out. So just be nice to people. Respect your, regardless of what it is, customer service, through text, on the phone, whatever the case may be, be nice to people. Don't be rude to people, especially not retail workers. They're just doing their job. Uh, anyway, so Corsair, awesome people. Getting a new system. I don't got to worry about them swapping components out. I'm just going to send me a brand new system. So that's good because uh, spending that amount of money on a computer, I was like, God damn it, that sucks, man. I can't believe my motherboard went out. Uh, I had an issue with it. I couldn't, couldn't figure it out past that. You know, I, and I, I didn't overclock anything, didn't underclock anything, didn't fuck around the BIOS at all. And I could bring up the BIOS and stuff. Uh, but I, it was stock. Didn't I didn't mess with anything? So I, you know, I'm I'm tr I really am baffled on what happened with that uh, computer there. But anyway, I'll get that back. So I'm on my old one. So I apologize if this video isn't as good quality. I'll probably have to stream on Streamyard this this weekend for live shows and stuff. Uh, good thing I didn't get done uh, getting the chat set up through OBS. That would have pissed me off. I would have spent a while getting all that stuff done. That computer uh, goes out on me there. So. Anyway, I'll get back. I'll get that done, uh, which is another reason why, like, hey, man, it'd kind of be cool if I don't. If we don't get practice this weekend, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> you know, I don't really like using this older, slower computer for things like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed your week. I'm back, and uh, let me get you an Xfinity Series video up shortly, and I'll, I'll see you guys in that one. See you then. I can finally stop recording button. There it is. See you guys then.